people to get in here and then uh, let's see what kind of damage we can do. In the meantime, uh, Crude is uh, damaging the hopes of anybody who wants to be long. <laughs> that would say. <laughs> Just getting no love at all. Um, but I think actually there's some there's some potential here. Um, where I mean, we the the long term story is that crude has been in a bracket of price from fifty to fifty four for weeks now, and you know they they try to get above it and they can't. And they try to get below it and they can't, and we just keep playing ping pong. And you can just see how much inventory is right around this area. And and so you know this morning we came down balanced here for a good hour and then now we're punching below try to see if we can get lower i'm actually looking at these single prints here from yesterday see if they could clean that up um and then maybe rotate back up towards this towards the close um we'll see we'll see there's actually some opportunity in all that but um just need to let it materialize um in the meantime uh we're gonna get started here so let me just pull on this get going welcome to our q a session a couple different ways that you can ask questions uh, we've got a q a box or you can use the chat window either way works you know whatever is easiest um, always a reminder that there is risk when it comes to trading and you know we want to preach and support the idea that before you ever put on a trade you know exactly why you're putting on that trade and what you're willing to risk uh, and, and have that set and defined uh, because you can have in some of these products unlimited losses and I, we need to be mindful of that. A little background on me. So I'm Josh Schuler. I'm the founder of Trade Profile. We've been doing this for JP, what, about a year and a half now um, as Trade with Profile, it, you know, kind of, yeah, like October 17 is kind of when we got going. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of my background, you know, started in the retail side and kind of felt like I didn't, I didn't, there was stuff I was missing. You know, it's it kind of that, uh, that stage two competence. I, uh, it was conscious incompetence. Like I knew there was stuff I didn't know. And so um, worked to get a job in the industry where I could kind of see another aspect of it, which just really helped hone things. And JP's on the call with us as well. Uh, one of our coaches and, a uh, great trader as well has spent a lot of time on physical commodity desks and um, also right now is just working on teaching his kids how to trade, which they're awesome. We don't talk about that enough that your boys are awesome traders. So far. So far. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Um, so the, uh, the, the topic today is, uh, is kind of a preview of what our group's going to be looking at next week, which is, uh, using open types to predict day types. And if, if you're just coming to the profile and, and auction theory is new to you, uh, this isn't going to mean anything to you. Um, for those of you who become zealots like myself, they, they, this is uh, kind of the way that you live and breathe. And uh, this is part of our development pathway. So each week we look at a different aspect of the auction and we try to tease out the principles that the auction has for us that we can apply to building a trading plan, which is ultimately gonna help us make better trading decisions. And as if we make better trading decisions, then we should be able to extract more profits from the market. Um, and we do that looking at kind of, you know, there's kind of three area, all, all of these modules work on kind of three areas of development that uh, we think are kind of, are crucial for anybody who's gonna be successful long-term in markets is that you can you can observe the four behaviors that are observable, observable in every auction. So you know, there's only really four behaviors that a market exhibits. Um, and there's four questions that we ask before we enter or ask and answer before we put a trade on. And then we, there's four stages of auction competency. So I, I just talked about stage two, which is a conscious incompetence. That's kind of like, you know what you don't know. Um, where a, lo a lot of traders are there, they're either there or they're stage one, which is an in unconscious incompetence, which you don't know what you don't know. And our goal is to get you to stage three, which is where you, you have a, a pathway to plan, you have a system that works and you can trust it, but it's not instinctive. When it becomes instinctive and it's like breathing, then it's stage four, and that's an in unconscious competence. Uh, so 
this idea about open types and day types is what we're covering next week, um, which is, no wait, that's not the, that's not, that was this week. Next week is uh, module 16. Um, I'm sorry about that. So it's correlating, it shouldn't, it's correlating, it's not distinct profile, that's what we talked about this week. Next week we're talking about uh, correlating open types to day types. And here's the challenge is, is, is it possible to have realistic expectations for how the rest of the session will, you know, will go before that happens? Because we're trying to make decisions on the hard right edge of the trade. And so, you know, if, if, um, if we could build some decent expectations around that, um, that would be really helpful, you know, so, or, you know, is it, is it a session that I'd should stay around for or should I do something else? You know, so not every day is worth your time. And, um, you know, or should you trade early in a session or later in a session? Like these are, these are the kind of questions you have to answer every day you come to the market. And fortunately, uh, how an auction begins is correlated to how it completes. And you guys know this, right? If you've ever been to like a heavy machinery auction or an art auction or bought something on eBay, like kind of the tempo of how an auction starts can dictate what's likely to happen later on. And so, you know, how this you know auction begins, it can predict the potential for the rest of the session, which then refines or negates aspects of a pre-session plan. And so we come in every day with a plan of, hey, we're, we're looking to be active in these, at these certain prices, but we don't know in what direction we're going to hit those. And we don't know how we're going to interact them or what, are we going to hit those levels early, late? We don't know. So how the auction opens can help set our expectations for when we might interact with those levels. And, you know, ultimately the trader who's got their arms around this is able to create an idea of potential and likely auction composition based on the open type. And then they can move past um, fixed composite reference points to see the four behaviors. And these four behaviors um, are, there's a beginning, there's a move, there's a test, and then there's another directional move. That's, that's kind of the four. If, if you've ever had exposure to, uh, you know, there's a, a similar nomenclature. If you've been exposed to Elliott Wave stuff, um, they kind of talk about these different waves of behavior. Um, I think that's overly complex. Uh, this is this is a way to just see those four. So uh, here here's the open types and the day types. So we count there are five open types and there are seven day types. And the, where it says module or module seven, module five. So we sp each week we we look at a specific day type or open type because they have although there's not textbook examples, there are structural similarities and that allow you to be able to say, oh yeah, that was a open test drive and that was a trend day. And, you know, so we spend, you know, one week throughout our 16 week module, making sure that we know, okay, what are those and how can we use those? But then, you know, the question is, is, you know, is there correlation between one to the other? And the answer is yes. So uh, in, in the list of these uh, open types, okay. So listed uh, from, um, here to here this is this is the more directionally convicted to uh, least directionally convicted so an a, a open called an open drive that's where the open just open the auction just opens and just boom goes okay that that is a very directionally convicted open where an open auction inside where we're basically trading back and forth inside the range of the prior day it doesn't have a lot of conviction on the open and then a Double distribution trend day is a very directionally convicted or day, and a non-trend day is a non-convicted day type. So what ends up happening is if you think about this, so if I have an open drive, which is a uh, very directionally convicted uh, open type, there's often a correlation between an open drive and the development of things like trend days or double distribution days or what we call a normal variation. So these are, you know, more directionally convicted days. And so that's, that's what we're going to spend, you know, all next week talking about is, um, you know, how, how, how to see and set the expectation around those. I won't spend a whole lot of time going into the, the correlations around that. 
if you're interested, you can do a trial with us next week and, and you'll get all that. Um, but, th but there is, there is a correlation between how we open and how the rest of the auction plays out. So, um, to that end, uh, we'll kind of end that bit and we'll look at actually where the markets are at right now <clears throat> in terms of, uh, how that's playing out. Um, we actually today have, I just mentioned an open drive. So this is an open drive, open type. So notice that the op there's an open here and then there's no trade above that at all. It's just, it's just open and boom, lower. Okay, that's a very directionally convicted open type, which has led to, uh, so far, a trend day lower. So every 30 minute period, we have made a lower low and a lower high, except for the one that we're in right now. So we'll wait to see if maybe that ends the trend. I, I personally am kind of waiting for them to, you know, see if they could end the trend down here. But that's at, at the at present we're looking at a trend day. It's still we still got time in the session. It could become a normal variation day, which a normal variation day has decent extension past the initial balance. However, it doesn't continue the one time framing the rest of the session. So if we get a higher high on a 30 minute period, that could uh, negate the trend. Uh, if that happens before the last hour of the session. And then um, NASDAQ, this is what we call an open auction outside of range because the auction has just been trading back and forth, back and forth, back and forth outside of the prior day's range. So we've opened with a conviction towards the downside. And so we're looking for, you know, continuation to the downside if they could get it. So far, they are not getting it. Um, here in the soybeans, we have what we call an open test drive. So the open here tests higher into yesterday's volume area, specifically um, this high volume area, and then rejects back through the open, which then leads to lower session prices. And uh, beans, I think, are on their way towards, this is more of a multi-day target, but down here at the 895 area. All right, so that's just a couple examples. So uh, any other questions y'all have about any of that stuff um, or any other markets you want to look at? Um, the floor is yours. <laughs> so the, uh, the balance of the time is uh, to, to do with it as you see fit. So we're, we're you know, we're in the middle of uh, kind of winding down the year. So, you know, day trade, you know, we're, we're trading, you know, with much less liquidity. You can see today in the NASDAQ, we've got, uh, um, you know, we're about 70,000 contracts below where we would be or, you know, have been on average for the last month. And, uh, so we got roll from Dece to March going on and, uh, end of year stuff. So that we're just, there's just not, I mean, even with this trend day lower in crude, you can see that we're not, it's all below volume. In fact, yeah, we just. It's not, it's not the best thing to look for a day trade. Position trade's not so bad, but, uh, but day trades are a little more cumbersome. Yeah, ES here trading about 250, almost 236,000 contracts below the average. All right, we're looking at ES. What, Joel, what do you wanna see on the ES, brother? We can certainly talk about the ES. I mean, similar situation here is open auction outside of range. Now we have IB low extension. Um, and, it, you know, we've got, I, I mean, I think we've got the overnight lows is definitely a target. Uh, ex extended target could be 2,600 today. Um, Let's actually look at uh, oh, that's not my right view. There we go. Yeah. So uh, fifty percent extension of the IB would get us to about twenty six. That get us to that overnight low. Um, you know, stretch. Let 
and there's somewhat of a potential that we could trend lower the rest of the day. We'll see. We, we've been talking about the uh, the plunge protection team, which is the just, it's a colloquial term for the um, oh I forget what they're called. The guys who can make the market move. Yeah, it's um, there's actually an official title. It's the wor working group on financial markets. Um, how they we've seen them kind of stepping in to make sure that the markets don't fall out of bed before uh, the holidays, because <laughs> nobody wants to do that. Um, but to your to your question, Joel, here on the um, the ES and and kind of what based on the open and what that looks. So we got open auction outside of range. We've got IB low extension. The expectation really for today is um, still for just rotations back and forth. I mean, there's there's an outside chance that, again that we could we could you know keep trending lower. Um, but if you look at kind of where we've already come, um, there's always already quite a bit of range here. If you get to 2609, what's the expected range on it? Yes, right now. Let's see. So 35 points. So 26.54. It's 35. You just said 26.19. So we're basically at the expected range right now. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how much they want to push it. I don't. I don't know. If they can trade higher on a th you know another thirty minute period, so you know, or we're about uh, ten minutes away from the next you know period, if they, if they can trade a higher high, or get back inside the IB range, then you know this thing's just going to probably rotate into the close today. Um, if they can keep making lower low lower highs on a thirty minute period, then you know I'd be looking for them to test into this volume area down here about twenty six hundred. So that's kind of the expectation. Other things that, and we talk about, we'll talk about this next week, but other things that factor in, you know, expectation around open and the day type that come out of it has to do with how wide the initial balance is relative to its average. So, you know, each, each product has a, has a different range of its IB uh, on average. And if it's, if that's wider or um, narrower, then, uh, you know, you can, you can think that there's going to be some more extension beyond that. But uh, at this point, you know, I'd be looking, I'd be looking to, uh, for opportunities to fade back toward value. To see, look, the developing point of control is still 2634. So yeah, we may trade lower, but look, this is all low volume. Uh, so it's really easy to get trapped down here. And with the less, with the light volume, it just takes somebody to come in with an order and just squeeze you pretty quick. They've been doing it all day. They've been doing it all day long. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, we 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 took a couple. I mean, I, I personally took a couple shots early on, which they worked, but they didn't get to target, and I eventually got you know stopped at you know a little bit better than break even, just because um, the, the chop stuff was just a mess. Um. Okay, is that is that helpful, Joel? Does that answer your question? And that's that's just we're you know we're lightly touching on it. Awesome. Okay, so Tony, I see your trade on. Uh, so you could could you explore? Well, something just triggered. What was that? Oh yeah, twenty six. So we over overnight low in uh, in ES is now taken out, which that's a that's a stat. There's ninety seven percent chance you're gonna take out the overnight high or overnight low. So that is done. See if they can sucker, sucker them in. And some other alerts trigger. Let's see what those were. Oh, those are just notes. Um, some potential. Oh man, NQ at eighty-one. So neutral day in the. So this is a neutral day type. Now that we we were trading the low. 
neutral day is where you take trade above the IB and below the IB. Um, so then the question is, is it going to be a neutral center or neutral uh, extreme? Actually, you know, what I've told everybody is there's kind of two, two areas I'm interested in trading now since I've seen the open is here or here. So we've got a, an area of volume that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna look for a potential uh, sponsor trade here if it comes maybe in the next hour. And it would have to come in the next hour. I'm not touching it because volume is gonna to continue to dry up as the rest of the day goes. But you can see, you know, values up here, we're below value. If they could, you know, push down here and stretch and then find a trigger uh, back up, that could, that could help us to find the opportunity. That'd be the target. And then we could, you know, based on some kind of short time trigger, keep our wrist tight. But we would expect that we would hold this level. If we don't hold this level, you know, then we're looking basically at the next one, 6,600. So that would be an idea there in um, the NASDAQ. The, the ES or the, the crude trade idea is if we could stop. Um, so if you can see, actually, let me, let me just delete this because this is actually now no longer a, the, um, where is that? this kind of clear this up so you can see this a little bit um so you can, I'm, I'm into an, an area that i'm actually interested in looking to be long crude i've got a potential target if we could you know rotate back up towards 5166 i also have single prints here in the in the profile and having you know one zone of singles that that would that's what defines a double distribution so, so far we have a double distribution trend day. We've got an area of balance here. We've got another distribution here. I mean, we could actually have a triple distribution day. Um, they're very rare. They're very rare. So, you know, if, if we can find an opportunity to, you know, trigger back up, we've got some targets and opportunity. I wouldn't expect that we would see crude above 51.66 today, but uh, I think 51.66 is possible. So we'll see if we can, uh, if we can get up there. Or not. Um, as far as shorting the ES, I, I mean, I I would not short. I mean, this is my trade plan. This is not an area that I short. I um. Yeah, we we pretty much extended at this point. You sh yeah, all the your. I mean, does it mean that it can? It's could it go lower? Absolutely. And you can see that there's there's sell, there's definitely you know they're on the sell side but you're stacking the odds against you because we're, they're moving across here and there's no volume. They're not, so they could really easily push higher back up into here. I'd almost rather be short on a rally than uh, if I had, you know, and again, I'd have to have some, some target lower, which would be the 2,600. So if, if I got a rally higher that could, you know, sellers came in before I got to 2,600, I'd be interested in that. But here, this is just, you're just asking to get trapped. And again, doesn't mean it doesn't go lower. And you know, you can easily look at that and go, "Oh, well, see, you should have been short." I'm like, "That's fine." I, I just seen this game so many times. <laughs> it's just easier um, to miss it. <laughs> easier to miss it. And you know, like think about this. So 1.5 the IB, or two yeah. times, right? So, in if you go back a thousand trading sessions, um, oh, you're saying the market's getting too short. So that would be T O O, not T O. Yeah, if if yeah, so yeah, I agree with you. We could be getting too short here. Yes, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Hey, see Tony's question too. He has one about potential position trades. Yeah, uh, um, you understand, um, Tony? Do you mean position as in months, or do you mean swing trades as in days to weeks? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. days well so in that case let's look at the uh, let's look at some longer term charts here so you want to look at so let's, we'll start with the ES Zoom in. Okay. So right now, um, 
U.S. is trading 26.12. So we're like right here, right? So this is just showing me end of day data. Um, and what do you, Jed, do you want to look at a uh, daily or weekly? JP? Um, let's start with a weekly. Okay. So here's the ES weekly. And we're trading in, you know, this, we're actually, this, this candle's different because we're actually now trading 26.12. So this has actually got quite a bit of selling access now. Yeah, so what I do is I go back and look at that previous week and, and we had a monstrous move that week and it totally engulfed the previous week on a weekly basis. That's a pretty negative um, indication, not guaranteed, but as you see, the price moved up early in the week, uh, tried to get up around 2687 um, and just couldn't couldn't muster up any, any buying in there. And right now, what I, I mean, the, a swing trade, and I, I wouldn't execute this on a Friday at all. Um, it's not the right day to do it, um, especially in, on a Friday with we have um, rollover happening. Um, now we have to look at the lows from February and also April as in play, okay, which those lows at this point in time, um, you know, are, are pretty significant. And um, if those get taken out, then, you know, we could have, um, you know, some nice downside to this. And so therefore, yeah, well, a lot of downside. If you see there's nothing until I think 2360 area. Um, yeah. If, if, so these are, these are now monthly uh, bars here, but here's the profile. So you can see there's a little, there's a little bit of a peak here at 2447. And then the next really big area is 2174. Yeah. Um, definitely like that. Um, it, 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 there's a lot to eat. Go, go to the daily charts. Okay. At this point, a swing long is, is tough because we have a lot to eat through to get to, to be able to have these buyers in control. I mean, there's a ton to eat through. Um, not to say that it, it can't happen, but that that tells me that, okay, you have uh, 2744 there is pretty much the line in the sand. Now, if we get a flush down here to the bottom, a, a big flush, and then this thing could roll back up, um, you, you could establish risk down below for a swing trade back to that 2744. But right now, below 2744, um, right, sellers are still in control um, at this point, and they're you know you got to look at those lows that Josh just is outlining right now um, from Feb or April, and then February down below there. So th there's there's decent risk reward there, um, and that's what I'm looking at on a Nasdaq. Um, I have not, I don't have a position right now, but uh, I'm watching it. Yeah, from from a from a macro standpoint, I mean this is this if we look at next year even. Um, you know, we could find that this 2744 is, is, is a ceiling that we come into next year that, you know, for the next leg down, um, which you know, when we, we talk about those four behaviors that are observable in every auction, I mean, in every time frame, it just, not everybody's capitalized enough to participate at larger time frames like this. But, um, I mean, I like, I like that me, me personally, I, I like, um, you know, call spreads above this area, like selling call spreads for credits, or you can buy put spreads, you know, that basically are, you know, they'll be in the money. They'll be good as long as you're staying below 2744. That's a way that you could, you know, give some duration to it, but, and you have a clear defined risk area. You know, if you, if you get start getting weekly closes above this area, uh, we could, there's, we could be right back up to the top. Um, crude, should we look at crude? So here's, here's just a profile of this move in crude. <laughs> just, you know, we've, we, this is, you know, you have a move, Rest, move, rest. So really this auction's only been exhibiting two behaviors of the four. You know, rest, move, rest, move, rest. And, and now we're in a larger 
resting and balancing phase. There's no, now note that, you know, the, the more pro prolonged this is that we spend down here, uh, there's no excess to the downside. So, so we could see a test below this that then returns back. Um, and that would be, that could be the flush that then allows this thing to, you know, head back this way. But, you know, right now, I'd say the longer we hold this, there's still potential for, for more downside or at least that flush. So that's the thing that you have to watch is if it pushes lower, um, can it, can it hold lower, you know, and can they keep getting acceptance kind of like, you know, here where you move and then you get acceptance and then you move and you get acceptance. So you kind of have to monitor that first move. And then if it fails back through there, uh, you would be wrong. Looking at that as that, so that dynamic on a, on a shorter scale, uh, looks something like this. So, you know, here's, here's soybeans. Uh, balancing for three sessions and then they push higher so it looks like hey that's the move can it you know can soybeans just keep going and you know but by the session they're you know basically back below the open and then the next day they come right back here which then says okay we're most likely going to go in the other direction two questions just look at crude here real quick they're still, they're all, they've almost got them. Almost got them. Let's see what we're going to put a little. And this, this has just been, we've talked about this internally in our community. It's just been a pain in the rear because it seems like we can't get any market to sustain in one direction. Like we, we <laughs> it's like we, we, you know, yesterday, yesterday was a really strong day in crude. And, you know, here today we've almost taken back almost all of it. I mean, look at this guys, this is, you know, the high in Globex. I mean, we're looking at a, a $3 move. Well, $2 move, almost two and a half dollar move. That's a big day. Expected move in crude right now is only a dollar thirty, so we're certainly beyond that. But they're still trending and almost to that target. Where's uh... okay? ES has hit two times the IB. Uh, so by the way, there's um, we, we I don't think I finished this uh, comment here, but on these extensions that occur. So in every, any session, there's only about a 25% chance that we'll exceed the 1.5, the IB. There's a 17% chance that we'll exceed two times the IB. And there's only a 3% chance that we'll take out three times the IB. So that would be, you know, like down here around 2596 area. Could happen, not likely. Do you want to explain the course real quick? Yeah. Just kind of watch him here. Is that 5121? Yeah, okay, how do the courses work? How does that work? So, um, if you go to our site. I'll shoot, hang on a second. So if you go to our, our site and click on, you know, well, from the homepage, you can click on our process, which kind of talks about how, um, how this whole thing works. So we have a, a development pathway that's 16 weeks or 16 modules. Basically, there's 16 core principles that we try to distill over about four months. And uh, the way that you engage that is with one is by selecting one of our trade plans. So one of our trade plans will take you through 
this pathway, but the, but the pathway is the, is the core. So you, you can read some more about this, but um, here are the, you can see the descriptions of each of the, of the modules. And you know, here's kind of the principle behind it. Here's the outcome that we're going after. And we spend a whole week uh, working on this. And um, actually, I think, where do I have the schedule? Yeah, so if you go, if you, if you look at the pick your plan aspect, um, so this will talk about how these, how these work. So Sunday evening, we do a, a weekly outlook video kind of talking about here's what we're going to be looking at this week. And then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we post a worksheet in the morning. Well, we post trade plans and charts uh, every morning for four products, bonds, crude, NASDAQ, and beans. And then Monday afternoon, we have a session kind of like this, where we, you know, do the high level stuff of the, of the, con of the module. And then um, I need to update that. Uh, to both Tuesday and Thursday mornings, we spend an hour trading live. And then Wednesdays is what we call What's Your Plan Wednesday. So that's where we, we actually don't publish plans, but we encourage you to do that so that you can, you know, publish what you're working on, how you're developing your plan, and get some feedback on that. Because our, our whole idea is to uh, really grow your skill. And so we'll, you know, whether you can participate with those live or not, you get recordings to all of that. So it ends up being about five hours of content every week and um, lots and lots of examples. Uh, the, the difference between, there's a, um, a couple different ways that you can engage this. So we have our, our trade plan, group trade plan, and one-on-one. -on -one. So here's the difference. So the group trade plan is, uh, it's, it's group learning. So we have, we use Slack as a communication channel um, that I can, I can pull over here and kind of show you what, what we've been doing this morning. So that, you know, this is where we're, up, we're, we're posting the plans and I'll show you what kind of what the plan, what a plan looks like. So here's the, a plan. that describes kind of what we're looking for and some key statistics. And then we, you know, there's a number of charts with predetermined, all my predetermined decision levels. And then, uh, you know, the rest of the session, we're discussing, you know, potential opportunities um, and looking for, you know, areas together and refining that. So that's, that's the group trade plan. And all of those participants also are on the live calls. Um, and that's 295 a month. If, uh, the, the regular trade plan is 135 and that's uh, all the same stuff except everything's recorded. So it's not, um, you don't get to participate in the live discussions, but you'll, you get all the recordings of everything else. What, what anybody who wants to take a trial with us will basically allow you to spend a week with us at this level. So you can experience that. It also help you just get oriented to what we're doing. And then you can decide if you want to go forward with this one or go forward with that one. And then the, the, um, only difference of the one-on-one -on -one is, you know, so the 16 modules, it takes you 16 weeks, literally four months to go through our process. Um, and some people are like, I don't, I don't want to wait that long. And I, I get that, but that's, that's pretty intensive on our part to help facilitate that. So um, group, group trade plan is a place that we'd encourage everybody to at least, you know, tr do their trial with, and then you can go from there. But I hope that, explains that well. Um, other things about it, you know, kind of initially what we're going to do is we're going to immerse you, we're going to give you a trade setup to look for every day and um, work and start building out your trading playbook. And so, you know, we'll keep, you know, every week you're going to be sub submitting weekly progress reports and, you know, we'll give you some feedback and help you, okay, here's what we're going to work on next week and, um, you know, work towards over time building your understanding. And the, and the idea is to, you know, to graduate you. Uh, it's not, it's not, you know, there are a lot of trading education firms out there. You know, it's like, Hey, uh, we'll just keep you on a drip forever. And you know, whatever you pick up, that's great. But you're basically just paying to watch somebody else trade. How does that help you be the best trader you can be? Um, this is about like you being able to put together your own trade plans and I mean, sure, you're, you're seeing the examples that we have because that helps accelerate the process. But, you know, it's, we're really focused on 
and how you develop it, your plan. Because wh where you want to get is at that stage four competency is that you can, you can decide, hey, I don't want to trade today. Or you can say, I want to look at other products that you guys don't talk about. That's totally cool. Um, cause all this stuff transfers to other products. We just look at these four products because we found that they, for the, for the risk and leverage, they offer the best opportunity, but that's just our preference. I mean, some people don't like the tempo. Um, they don't like trading a product like this that, um, can move two and a half dollars. Cause you know, if you're wrong all day long, you're down 2,500 bucks a contract. Um, did I, is that. How was that? JP, was that succinct enough? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, guys, it's all about, it really is education. Um, listen, Josh and I could go out and get hit by a bus tomorrow. So how are you going to trade? You're going to just sit and watch somebody? I will tell you that they don't, that's not the right way of doing things. You got you to gotta learn how to handle these situations on your own. And not that you should be doing it by yourself. It's always fun to trade with other people, but um, you, you have to understand what your, your style and your, your trades are. Okay. Cause that's what it boils down to. It's not somebody else's trades, your trades. So, you know, giving you the education on uh, the profile and how to use it for you yourself. Um, that, that's, that's powerful. <laughs> um, like Josh said, it's a, you know, stage four competency and not too many people get to that level. So, yep. Um, as far as software, we get questions about software now. So, like the the platform you're looking at here is uh, Window Trader from Window Trader Blue, which I I mean, I love it. Um, but there's other profiling software out there. We try to make it agnostic to products. So you know, the idea is, hey, as long as you can see what you need to see, you can pick what platform you want to use. Um, but if you know if you want to use the platforms that we use, we use this one. We use IRT. Uh, we use Thinkorswim. And so any of the templates that we have, you can have those. And um, you know we do believe in group learning. So when we talk about the you know the group stuff, um, it's you're benefiting not just from your own understanding, but from others. Um, oh, that's a good question. So you've done a, a Dalton intensive. So I will give you the feedback that we've had from those who have done Dalton intensives. I'm trying to think if anybody else is on, a, is on the call already who has done one of those. I don't think so. So can I ask a question before you go in it? Because Josh has, I know what Josh is going to say. Um, <laughs> who is it that asked that? I'm sorry. Joel. Hey, Joel. Um, thanks for being with us. Um, so do you have a from that intensive, do you have a, a, a trade plan? Do you have, do you know what your trade is and how to manage it and, and you know, how that thing works for you? Is that what you got out of that? And I'm not saying he's bad. He's obviously very knowledgeable. I have his books. Yeah. Um, I have his books. Uh, no. Okay. So here's, here's how we, we help. Not only are we going to, teach the profile and and you know different ways of using it different i mean th what josh talked about in the um at the very beginning which is the pathways the things invaluable you're gonna you're gonna walk away with every aspect of of the profile and not only that you're gonna learn you know different trades proven trades that happen on the profile that you can you you can accept for yourself or um, or take those and use them in your current trade plan to see if they, you know, correspond to that. And then triggers, which are important, how to, and that's that's a way to actual uh, define risk on the deal. And that's bait. That's what you're going to end up with. Um, um, J Dalton does a phenomenal. He's super knowledgeable, unbelievably knowledgeable. Um, but that's where it ends with him. And I mean, I've learned from him and I appreciate his efforts and stuff like that, but that's where we saw a gap in the marketplace. It's like, okay, that's fine. People are doing that and they're spending a lot of money doing it, unfortunately. But now my question is, is, you know, listen, to be successful in trading and, and man, anybody who's dealt with me in the past, know that I'm going to, I'm going to, they've heard this a gazillion times is that you have to have a plan set out for yourself, a certain style of trading, a methodology, a trade plan, you know, a trade setup, whatever you call it, doesn't matter. They're all the same. You have to have that and you have to own it. 
And if you don't have that, then you're just playing at this point. And you don't, we don't want people to play. We, if they want to be successful traders, then you got to do a couple things that you may not be doing right now. And one of them is develop that plan. So that's the differentiator. And, um, you know, hopefully that helps. Josh, yeah. I know what you're going to say, so go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, so we, we've had, we've had a number of uh, Dalton participants that have, have come to do stuff with us. And the consistent feedback that we get is uh, by, by doing the intensive with Dalton, I was convinced of the power of the profile. And I was convinced that this tool actually can give me edge, right? Which that's, that's extremely important. Uh, you know, believing that, hey, this approach to you know, reading the, the auction can give me edge. Um, that, that is the deal. The, the, the difference is, and this is the feedback I get is, okay, so I get that confidence, I believe in the tool, but how can I translate that into actually defining and building my trades? That, that has it yet been the missing component in his intensives. So any, anybody who says, I want to I you know, gain confidence in the profile, I want to understand the auction, you know, do you think going through one of his intensives is a good idea? I'd say absolutely. Um, you know, and to JP's point, I mean, I've, I've read everything that, that uh, Jim's done and you know, we have kind of a correlated relationship through Window Trader, because um, because Jim uses Window Trader as a as a platform as well, and uh, we both know uh, Terry Lieberman. So, um, yeah, that's that's just been the that's been the consistent. In fact, I think Julia, who was part of Jim's intensives, went off to create her own her own deal, and it was really kind of trying to fill that gap because. <laughs> Cause he just, he just not wanted, not really wanted to disclose, you know, trades and, and setups that he was using and wanted, wanted to uh, have that be more uh, self-evident. And, and to, to the defense of, of Jim, there, there's actually good rationale in that is cause, cause look, if, if you can, if you can set an expectation of where you believe the auction's going to go and where you believe it's going to rest and where you believe it's going to test, then over time and enough time with the auction, you should actually be able to construct ideas. I have just found um, over the last several years of doing this that most traders need a little bit more help than that. And so that's, that's why we try to, we're, we're going to initially immerse you in a trade idea, a couple setups that you can use and look for every single day. And then we're going to build on that. And so as you're, you know, so if you've been through the intensive, some of it's going to seem redundant. I'm sure, um, and some of it won't, because uh, we talk about profiling statistics and behavioral statistics that Jim does not, that uh, helps explain, well, why does it behave that way? Or why do I have this expectation that it'll go to this price? Um, and that, that also helps kind of helps with some expectations, so. Let's give an example of that. Um, and, and by the way, Earl, I totally agree with you. And Earl's in here and Earl's been through that. Um, so, um, you said something that triggered me. Sorry. <laughs> now I can't think of it. Um, all right. So this morning, uh, the first 30 minutes, the first three 30 minute sessions, right? Um, 67.22 is a pretty important level this morning. We were watching it. Um, and, you know, there were singles not at that level, but uh, I think it was they were over 67.30 area. Yeah, we good. got into those singles. Then from there, we could run it up into the 50 area. That was an opportunity for us we were looking at. But three consistent closes on a 30-minute basis could not close above that 67.22 level, right? Yep. And because of that, um, what, what is that telling you? It's a behavioral, right? That now, we're, we're, now we're talking behavior. Now, if they can't, if, they, if that's just point, if they can't take those things out in, during three 30-minute sessions, they may want to go down and test the other side of the range, which they, that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, does that mean it's going to happen every time? No, it doesn't. But what it does is it allows you to look at an opportunity that is probably high, highly probable. And then second of all, if anybody's left long up there, they're going to squeeze them short. And then you get a sort of a, um, well, you get a better move. And, and that's exactly what we saw as well. Plus you can establish risk knowing where you're, okay, I'm wrong if I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the behavior that Josh talks about. And, and we like to talk about being behaviorist because we sort of are. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're looking at what the, the profile 
does that? It obviously shows time and price and volume, right, on the TPO side, but it also shows price and volume um, on a volume chart. And that's most important because, you know, that tells you where business has been done, okay, and where it could be going. Um, but now we have to look at behavior of, you know, algorithms and people that also plays into it as well. So we're also behaviorists knowing that, okay, if we push an IB out, we return back to the IB, we accept inside the IB, there's probably a pretty good chance we're going to rotate down to the center or maybe even test the lower edge of that, uh, the, the lower IB. And so those are just behaviors and there's statistics around those behaviors um, that help you give you a better edge um, and also help you um, you know, establish risk. Yep. So if you can use any of those inside of your trade plan to make your trade plan, I don't say more solid because I, I would never look at, and one thing I did when I was a beginning trader is I always looked at, okay, I want to, I want to, I want something that's going to be 95% probable. Well, first of all, that, I don't know if that's, there are a couple no brainer trades out there in the world, but um, those are so hard to come by. Um, but at the other thing is, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for my risk to be established and I have opportunity there based on behavior statistics and the profile. So I'm looking for the trifecta on the deal and that's my trade plan. Um, so. Yeah, other, other, uh, yeah, that's absolutely right. When we mean by uh, statistics around that, um, Joel, so this is what we would call a, a tier two gap. So think of gaps in terms of percentage of the expected range of a product. And we, we, we calculate, we use expected range instead of average trading range because expected range is generated by the implied volatility of the options markets. And that is a move, that's a leading indicator. So, you know, ATR, average trading range is a lagging indicator. So this is a predictive element. You know, an expected range is a 70% chance that you're going to stay inside that range on a given day. So, a gap, which we have a gap in the NASDAQ. Um, this is what we would call a, a, a well, w where we opened. So where we opened, we had basically got to 50% of our expected range on the open. At, at a tier two gap, there's about a 50-50 chance that that thing will close. If you go back and, and you measure every, you know, open that was, you know, at the expected range for the last five years, that's the that's stats. If, if we had said open maybe like right here, which would be more of a you know 25% expected range, then there's about a 65% chance that that gap's gonna close. If, if we had opened like down here, you know, which would have been at what we call a tier three or basically at the expected range, uh, the probability that that closes is 3%. So that definitely informs what, you know, what you think was, and which by the way, um, we had, we actually had that happen last week. We opened here. This was the open and um, we, we went and closed that sucker. And that was an exceptionally rare um, move. A lot of us missed the really meat of that short because we just didn't believe it. <laughs> we were like, it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna happen. Um, but that actually also, um, uh, calls on things, something that uh, Greg mentioned here. So, you know, one of the other things that we talk about that um, that Dalton does not, which I, I have found um, very useful, and we, we actually did a session on this a couple weeks ago. But, um, so I just, I want to, I want to, this, and this is just think or swim here, so this is pretty rudimentary, but let's just look at NASDAQ here. Okay, and we're going to look at uh, where where the fairest price is across multiple time frames. Okay, so this is a composite profile. This, this is five. You know, think of this like the last week. So the the composite profile for the last week, the most traded price is sixty seven seventy six. Okay, now for the last month, that price is seven sixty seven fifteen. Kind of right here. Okay, and for the last nine months, it's at 74.12. So if you, if you think about that, I mean, and these, the, the monthly and the weekly are pretty close to each other. Um, so that's something that we call posture. And if, if you actually look at the relationship between the price and where value is for the last week and where value is for the last month, you'll actually find that there are only nine orientations that exist 
and that the auction does consistent things in those orientations over and over and over and over again. And so even, even the question um, asked about like position trades and opportunities, uh, knowing where you are from a posture standpoint uh, can really help define kind of the core strategy of what you're looking at. So like right now, we're, we're what I would call a, you know, price is a little bit below the five day, which is kind of equal to the 20 day. Um, you can see those represented in the composites here and, um, and here. And if, if these aren't more than, uh, you know, expected range apart, I kind of basically consider them merged. So, you know, we're basically at balance. The auction is, is in balance, could go either way. And we'll just see if it, you know, can it get acceptance in one direction or the other. So there could be a larger move coming um, in the equities, or as we have holidays coming, we could just watch this continue to, to balance into next week, which I believe we have FOMC. Is that right? We have FOMC on Wednesday. That will be an important one. Yeah. Yeah, we have FOMC. So I, my expectation right now is this thing's going to continue to balance and just trade sideways until Wednesday. Not, and, not really get acceptance either way. Yeah, and we have also, we're coming into the end of the year. We always tell everybody <clears throat> that, listen, the last two weeks of the year are, are not worth it. Um, I will tell you after Tuesday, I'm shutting her down for the rest of the year. Um, so it, it, so any, I mean, just beware of that. I mean, cause then listen, do you think that the, <clears throat> the larger time frame players are going to be doing a lot of trading into the end of the year? Eh, there'll be a few firms and there'll be a lot of algorithms running, but for the most part, those guys are going to be out the door, you know, worrying about their families on vacation, on vacation, all that kind of stuff. So not a lot's going to be going on. And, and you know what, I'm, uh, this is something that, again, there's a couple things that, that I will tell people and it's something that was told to me and it's run, it's rings true. You don't need every trade. You don't want every trade, to be honest with you. Um, there's going to be so many opportunities out there. You may miss a, on the ES, you may miss a 30 point move, right? And that, that's just fine. And, um, it, you know, and so it, it is what it is. And um, there'll be more of those. There'll be tons of those out there. So if you miss one, just let it go. You know, if you miss two weeks and you see there's big moves, let it go. Um, it's just not worth it. So, um, and I'm expecting trade to get pretty crazy over the next two weeks with all the geopolitical issues going on and the fact that we are hovering right here at, at yearly opens and stuff like that. So I'd rather uh, be sipping hot cocoa than doing yeah. that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so kind of like our time frame. Um, so we're, we'll, we're going to spend some time early next week, kind of going over our last module for 2018. And then we're going to start back again on uh, the Wednesday after new year's and that we'll start back again with module one and uh, we'll run that through um, the first third of the year. And uh, that's kind of our, our window. Cause yeah, there's just not going to be much opportunity. Hey, for any of you guys who are in our community, you remember me talking about this structure cleanup? We're going to get that today. You're still talking about those things. <laughs> still talking about those things, man. You've been wanting that one for a while. Well, I wanted it all day yesterday is what I wanted it. And then I didn't get it. And I get it today. So this is... This is a, this is what, this is a one set of it's called a structure cleanup. So when you have a you know prior session, um, the idea is you know here's two days of balance at the same price. You get acceptance below that, and that increases the probability you're going to go and clean, clean up those. Nice. Um, all right, we're. Um, Daryl, I see your question. I'm gonna send you. I'll send you the a response in uh, Slack here. Um, all right, gang. Um, any other questions that we can 
answer kind of going once I was hoping I was man I was hoping that crude was going to get down here and we were going to see a reflective kind of bounce little little intraday trade but I, I just don't think they're going to give it to us so I, I think I'm kind of done for the day yeah crude is it's my expectation that crude is going to continue to do this until Christmas time because <laughs> you know what when you least expect it guess what um that's just my guess I, i'm avoiding crude at this point yep it's that we've tried and we've had some good trades but man alive it just can't get over the hump yeah so. can't can't get any anything sustained to save its life no i agree um okay that's done that's done that's done Um, go back to our slides here. Well, he's doing that. Anybody, any last questions, anything? Um, we're open questions. Can I, even if you want a candlestick, question i'm with you um just let me know i mean we'll, we'll answer anything i don't want to go too deep into options because this is probably not the place for that but yeah, yeah we're glad to answer anything mm -hmm. uh, if you want to look at uh correlating date types to open types and want to take a test with this next week uh, you can get started just go and pick your plan and you'll get started with a sunday night uh, we'll be covering that uh, we'll be doing that. We're going to have kind of a condensed schedule next week. So we'll be kind of doing that through Wednesday and, um, and then we'll be done. We won't be doing anything Thursday and Friday because the year will pretty much be wrapped. Um, follow, connect with us on Twitter or Facebook and you can always give us a call at uh, the number you see there. And uh, that's about it for today. Appreciate everybody's questions. Um, and your participation, hope this is helpful. You know, we, we do this just as a, you know, another way to give you an opportunity to kind of see, see these tools happening live and kind of ways that we look to express risk using them. And um, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. We'll try to get this uh, recording out uh, either this evening or tomorrow. Um, so that will be coming to you. Um, yeah, thanks, Earl. Thanks, guys, for showing up. Again, if you have other questions you think of, just shoot us an email or something, and uh, we'll get them answered for you. Otherwise, just uh, have a wonderful holiday, safe holidays, and then, um, you know, good luck trading. You still there, Josh? I am. Okay. <laughs> it's like, wow, I radio at, silence. It's scary, man. At, I, was looking at <laughs> I was looking at crude here, and I was like, oh, come on, buyers, step in there. Come on. Buyer, it's you Friday. Do it. What a hell of a We're close to the close on Friday. That ain't happening. I want to, come on, just give me a little pop. Like, pop to like. It's time to grab the bike and go for a ride, man. Do something, man. I'm telling yeah. you. That's right. <laughs> oh, we'll get them next week. That's right. See y'all. All right, take care, guys.